All right, good afternoon. Been a little bit, been over a week, would have posted sooner, had every intention of doing that. Guess what? Tore a frigging inner quad. Tore my inner quad. And I didn't even tear it. I wasn't even, I wasn't even lifting with that muscle or using that, that muscle. I wasn't doing legs or any other thing. It was just a weird freak accident because I was picking all my weight up on one leg coming out from underneath of something sort of in a limbo position and um, extremely awkward position and so I was coming up at an angle and on this one leg all my weight was momentarily on there and when I pushed myself up under there the son of a bitch popped. So that is the same inner quad that right inner quad just the same muscle that I tore back in like 2008 when I really was really large and when I really was lifting a ton of weight and I was training legs when I tore it then and it snapped across and up because it tore from down the bottom and it snapped across and up my thigh and it was a really very bad tear you know everything whole leg black and blue you know a couple days after from all the bleeding it was excruciating it was a real son of a gun so this was plenty painful but it was it's probably a category or a class two care i'm sure which that's a really wide range they, they have like three different classes like a class one or a category one is um up as much as five percent to tear and uh category two goes all the way from over five percent to 95 percent or 90 some percent and then um above 95 percent is category three and they they consider that to be basically a complete complete tear complete separation so it could have been a lot worse. It could have never happened, which would have been better. So why is this bullshit happening? Well, it's because I'm 60 years old and there's a cascading effect with all these hormones. When your body, when this hormone production decreases, these major players in your body, that shit doesn't occur in a vacuum. There's a cascading event. There's major hormones. They issue and control and stimulate the production of tons of enzymes, um, lesser hormones and peptides. Now I know everybody hears peptides, you're familiar with peptides as far as these, these um, research chemical peptides. However, uh, most of the research chemical peptides are synthetic versions of natural peptides that are created in the human body. The human body has upwards of 60,000 natural occurring peptides within it. So there's a whole lot going on and when one of these major you know, like GH or something. And by the way, even with growth hormone, you know, you've all heard of growth hormone. You probably think there's one kind of growth hormone. Well, there's not. Your body makes four different kinds of growth hormone. So, uh, it, like I said, it's this, this immensely complex cascading effect, and it's difficult to figure out exactly what the remedy is. Um, certainly, it's an easy enough pretty much stab you can take a very well educated stab at repairing it as quickly as possible but then beyond that I want to figure out what um, what preventive measures I can take what can I take to uh, prevent it from happening again what do I got to put into my body uh, to replace whatever it, it's not producing enough of so I can regain some of this muscle elasticity in these muscle fibers and it doesn't have has very little to do, and in some cases it could, but it has very little to do with flexibility. You could be very flexible, all right? But we're talking about, um, first off, all muscle tissue, all muscle fibers are not designed to be that elastic. You have some very, uh, some muscle fiber is, is very uh, rigid, you know, but we have muscle fiber that's designed to be elastic, have a great deal of elasticity to it so that you can stretch and pull on the muscle, but you take anything to its, its furthest extent and you're going to risk an injury. So the difference between flexibility and elasticity is you can have, you can practice good flexibility, but in the real world out there in day-to-day -day life, if you get yourself in a spot where the muscle is pulled, that it's, um, it's under duress and it's being stretched enough, and then all of a sudden you are trying to push it, make it go in the other direction by contracting you're trying to make it perform and do something out of that position. That's a sudden, you know, change of direction. And that is where 
this decrease in elasticity in the muscles as you get older, which happens in every individual person. It just happens at different times of their lives. You can't really say when it happens. You know, so like I said, I wasn't lifting. It was just this oddball, oddball freak uh, accident where I was lifting my body weight up and I was coming up in a really weird way. Uh, and I had all of my weight, only momentarily, but I had all my weight on this one leg and I was driving myself up with that, trying to get up and under, out from underneath or something with that uh, at an angle. And it popped. It popped. That inner quad popped. So I have gotten a hold of IGF-1, BPC-157, TB-500, and um, MGF. MGF. So I'm going to be taking these, and if everything is everything, you know, this stuff should have me healed lickety-split, and then some. If everything's above board, it should be, and then some, because that, um, that MGF can be a real, yeah, uh, big asset. Um, now, the other thing is this, like I said before, I alluded to with, I was talking about BPC-157 a few videos back, it mentioned that it's not all the same, and that the real genuine shit made out of an FDA-approved lab or an FDA-approved compounding pharmacy is a far cry. Far cry from you just Googling it and finding it on the internet and paying mere pennies on the dollar almost for this shit. You know? Um, they do, even though it may not be approved by the FDA um, for, for, as a prescribed drug, there's still this gray area and it's, it's validly used in research. So where do you think they get this, you know, the materials to research? Where do you think they get the compounds that they're doing research on? They're produced by FDA approved laboratories. It's real shit. And there's a big difference in there, big difference. Uh, and not only that, but now, you know, many of these compounds, particularly these ones that I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to put on board as soon as I get off of here, I'm getting ready to take the first administration. These compounds are used in the medical community and have been prescribed to patients post-surgery, uh, for muscle tears, and other things. So, legit shit, you know, FDA-approved lab, yeah, you know what you're getting. You know what you're getting. And there have been incidents. You can Google it. There have been incidents where people have had some very serious problems with development of cysts and some other fucked up shit. Well, an instance where they were not using FDA approved laboratory products. So make of that what you will. And again, roll them bones, you know, roll the dice if you like. So what I'm going to do is, uh, of course, I'm not putting all this bullshit on YouTube, just like for the same reason that I always said, I'm not doing that kind of crap on here. But on, on my uh, Patreon, I am absolutely going to show the compounds what they are, how to reconstitute it, what amounts of bacteriostatic water to use to come up with what uh, potency dose-wise, how much to take, when to take it, how to take it, and every other friggin' thing, and uh, where I got it. So um, it's going to be this experiment. I'm going to follow it on my Patreon, interspersed with other videos as we go, and we're going to find out. Did it have any factor? Did it actually make a difference? Not to mention, you know, what is it going to do that, especially that, that MGF, what is that going to do for my physique, right? Because I'm going to augment that in. I'm going to take it anyway. So I think that's going in intramuscularly um, right afterwards, day after whatever muscle I train, you know, or, or maybe right after. I'll have to really research it up. But that shit's supposedly we'll see we'll see is it going to work i can only hope and then hopefully once we figure out um or maybe i might be able to solve this problem with the reduction in elasticity that my muscles seem to have the muscle tissue seems to have due to age and uh you know that's that see if i can reverse some of that and get some young behaving muscle tissue again if at all possible we'll see what else am I going to do, you know? So that's it. I'm off of here. Like I said, uh, it's going to be on Patreon. Join if you want to. If you don't want to, don't join. You know, no skin off my nose either way. But I'm getting a little burned out on YouTube. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to still be here in post. But I'm moving into 
revealing these other things that I, I practice and know about, and I'm not going to put that shit on here. Maybe a little bit, I may mention here and there or something, but I'm not really going to get into great detail shit on here, because the, the, the potential for somebody to just take that and abuse that information, and somebody young, and also the nonsense, and the mix and match tidbits they collect from this person and that person and this person, I don't want any part in that. All right, so you guys take care. Have an excellent evening, and, uh, you know, wish me luck, I hope.